Integration Techniques, Lesson 8, Integration by Parts. This technique works especially well in integrands in the form of x to the n ex dx, the product of two functions. Ln x actually is an integration by parts type integrand, and x to the n sine x. Again, you've got a function times a function, so we need to use integration by parts. If f and g are differentiable functions, then by rule for the differentiating products, the product rule, we have the derivative of fx gx is fx g dash plus gx f dash x, the product rule. The following is going to be a proof on how we obtain the rule for integration by parts. To integrate both sides, we obtain the following. The left hand side then results in fx gx plus c. The right hand side, we're keeping the same. Next, if we rearrange this, by bringing this to the left hand side, we obtain the following. Hence, this gives the integral of fx g dash x dx equals the product of fx gx take the integral of f dash x gx dx. This yields the formula, the integral of u dv equals uv take the integral of v du. This is more accurately written as the integral of u dv dx dx equals uv take the integral of v du dx dx. That is, when we have a product that we're trying to integrate, we call one u and one dv dx. Example 42, evaluate 2x ln x dx. We have to let one of them equal u and the other one equal dv dx. We've chosen u to be ln x and dv dx to be 2x. When we integrate this, we're going to have 2x becoming 2, which is going to be helpful. So du dx is 1 on x. Now we're going to integrate both sides. So to find v, it's the integral of 2x dx, separation of variables. The integral of 2x is x squared plus c. Step 3. Recall and apply the rule for integration by parts. That is, the integral of u dv dx dx is uv, take the integral of v du dx dx. So we need a u, a v, and a du dx, which we have all over here. Substituting those in, we have ln x is our u, x squared was our v, take the integral of our v, which was x squared, the u dx was 1 on x. Cancel out this x and x squared to make an x. The integral of x dx will simply be x squared over 2. So rewriting that again, we now have x squared ln x, take x squared on 2 plus c, and that's actually our antiderivative. The next line, we've simply just simplified it by multiplying this x squared ln x by 2 over 2 to make common denominators, and then I factorised out the x squared, which is the following. Example 43. Evaluate the integral x take 5 all squared times e to the x. So that's the product where we have x take 5 squared times in e to the x. Step 1. Think while we choose the first function as the u. That is, I've got this product rule here, and I've got to decide which one I'm going to call u. We're going to let u equal x take 5 all squared. Why? Because when we differentiate this, that power of 2 is going to reduce to a power of 1. Whereas the integral of e to the x is simply going to be e to the x. And if we had it derived it, it would have been e to the x. So that's why we're choosing u to be x take 5 to the power of 2. So du dx is 2 lots of x take 5, and the integral of dv dx equals e to the x, integrating both sides, we get v equals the integral of e to the x dx, which is e to the x plus c. We now have u, du dx, dv dx, and v, which is what we need to finish off our integration by parts. So the integral of x take 5 squared e to the x dx is now rewritten as u and a v take the integral of v du dx dx. Now this integral here, 2 e to the x, x take 5, looks a bit tricky. So we're going to take out that coefficient 2, and we have e to the x outside of x take 5. Complete integration by parts a second time. That is, let u equal x take 5. u dx then is 1. If e dx is e to the x, hence if you want to find v, it's the integral of e to the x dx which is 
e to the x plus c. Combine parts one and two. So the integral, which was originally written as this, there was the result from our first stage of integration by parts. In red is integration by parts part two, which is in red over here. So we've substituted in our terms for u and v, and dv, and du dx. Now, the integral of e to the x is simply e to the x. Next stage is to collect like terms. So I have negative 6 e to the x. Now I have a common e to the x. So let's factorize out the e to the x. Now I have part 1 and part 2. I see an e to the x in both of those. So I'm going to take out the e to the x. And I'm left with x take 5 all squared. Take two lots of x take 6. Simplifying this in terms of x squared, x and a constant, I have e to the x outside of x squared, take 12x plus 37, plus a constant of integration. We've completed a intermediate question on integration by parts because we have to complete it twice. Example 44, evaluate the following, e to the x cos 3x dx. Calling our integration by parts rule, we need a uv and a v du dx. So that u equal e to the x, hence du dx is e to the x. That must mean that dv dx is our cos 3x. V then is the integral of cos 3x dx. V then is 1 third sine 3x plus c. So the integral e to the x cos 3x is our u, our v, take the integral of our v to u dx. It seems that nothing has been accomplished because I've got this integral, which is 1 third sine 3x e to the x. What to do next? Let us integrate this new integral, 1 third sine 3x e to the x by parts. Let u equal e to the x, du dx is then e to the x. dv dx then is 1 third sine 3x, hence v is the integral of 1 third sine 3x dx, which becomes negative 1 ninth cos 3x. Continuing this integration by parts for the second time, we have the integral of 1 third sine 3x e to the x. Now applying integration by parts with our uv, take v to u dx dx, we've got the following. That's the result, that's the integral of 1 third sine 3x e to the x. Rewrite the original problem and use the results from part one and part two. So that was our original integrand. We then had uv take the integral of 1 third sine 3x e to the x, which is this. So this result is now here. Simplify the following. We now simplify this, which is then say take take becomes a plus, and we have subtract the integral of 1 ninth cos 3x e to the x. Note that negative sign can come out here to become a positive, and if we take that, we get take 1 ninth integral of cos 3x e to the x. Now, Note that the original integrand was e to the x cos 3x. I have that here. So it seems to appear to rearrange to group like integrands. Note, I've highlighted those in red. I have an e to the x cos 3x and e to the x cos 3x. So let's add 1 ninth of that to both sides. And now I've combined like integrands. 1 plus 1 ninth is 10 ninths cos 3x e to the x dx equaling my right-hand side. Now, if I multiply both sides by 9 tenths, I can remove this. So multiplying both sides by 9 tenths, so 9 tenths times 1 third is going to be 9 over 30. And times this by 9 tenths, I'm going to have 9 over 90, which is 1 over 10. Hence, the integral of cos 3x e to the x dx is the following. Factorizing out e to the x over 10, I mean, technically, this is the same as this, but simplifying it a little further, a common factor was e to the x times one tenth, or one tenth e to the x. Taking that out, this is a simplified version, which is our final antiderivative. Example 46, evaluate ln x dx. The important step in this question is recognizing one as being dv dx. That is, you've got the integral of one times ln x dx. One is dv dx. So recalling the integration by parts rule, we're going to let u equal ln x, and dv dx is 1. u dx then is 1 on x, and v is the integral of 1 dx, which is x plus c. Recall and apply the rule for integration by parts. So 
ln x dx is uv take v du dx dx. Subbing those in, we have ln x times x take the integral of x times 1 on x. Cancelling the x's out, we have the integral of 1 dx. Integral of 1 dx is simply x. So our final result, which is our antiderivative of ln x, is x ln x take x plus c. That's an interesting one. You think it'd be simple to integrate ln x, but you have to use integration by parts to do it. That's the end of integration by parts, and that finishes off our topic for integration techniques.